Thank you, Operator. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's Bellator NYC conference call. Joining us on, today, on today's call will be Fedor Emelianenko, Matt Mitrione, lightweight champ Mike Chandler, Brent Primus, and light heavyweight champ Phil Davis, and his opponent Ryan Bader. At this time, we'll go straight to questions. If you'd like to ask a question on today's call, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Operator, we'll take the first question. Our first question comes from the line of Steve Juwan with the MMA Mania. Thank you, Operator. My first question is for Matt Mitrione. Are you 100% now for this fight? All of the kidney stone issues have been completely cleared up? I am completely, as far as I know, I am 100% completely free from kidney stones, and um, I'm ready to go, little buddy. All right, that's very good to hear. Now, a question, if I may, for Fedor. I've heard some rumblings on a previous conference call that Chael Sonnen would like to challenge him to a fight, so win or lose against Matt Mitrione, is that something you would entertain? Uh, they're in different weight categories. <laughs> All right. Well, Joe said weight categories don't matter, so he thinks he could uh, take you on at any weight. <laughs> Uh, we're going to discuss this after the fight. <laughs> Fair enough. And one more question for Brett Primus. You've kind of quietly come up underneath the radar at 7-0 and now, undefeated in your Bellator career. Do you think that gives you a little bit of an advantage going into this uh, title fight on June 24th? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, there's not a bunch of film on me, and you know, I really haven't been able to show my true potential, and you know, like I said, you know, there's not a lot of film on me to look up and, um, yeah, you know, I think it's great. You know, there's a bunch of film on Chandler and a bunch of wars. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, we've seen him fight so many times and seen a lot of what he's capable of doing. And, you know, that's uh, a lot to, you know, look up and, and study, you know, but there's not too much study on me. So, yeah, I think it's a, a good thing for sure. All right. Well, we look forward to the fight. And, gentlemen, thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of Dylan Bowker with LibertyMultimedia.com. Hi there. Thanks for taking my call. My question is for Fedor first. Now, it seems like throughout your legendary career, you kind of struggled against some guys who are smaller than you guys like Henderson, Maldonado, Arona. Now, with Mitrione being the bigger opponent this time out, do you feel like you're going to have a marked speed advantage and that's going to be a key factor in this fight? В твоей карьере у тебя были проблемы с ребятами, которые были легче, чем ты, как Хендерсон, Малкинадо. А вот так как мы, по-моему, тяжелее тебя, ты думаешь, что у тебя будет преимущество, потому что ты быстрее и легче? Ну, я не думаю, что это можно сделать таким образом. Нет, не обязательно, что легче спать не могу какие-то проблемы. Есть преимущество в легком весе, это скорость, конечно, более тяжелом весе, это сила и мощь. I don't think there's an, any relevance or connection uh, uh, with weight difference. Uh, each fight has its, its own, you know, specifics and uh, uh, it doesn't really matter if it's lighter or heavier. Um, as he said, each fight has its own nature, and um, and basically it, it doesn't matter to him. You know, it's not it's not the case. Fair point. And another question for Fedor: Just you know, coming from humble beginnings in Stereolsko, Russia, without really a lot of money, and a guy who's you know kind of quiet and you know pulled in the back a bit. I'm wondering what his thoughts are on being featured on a card like this, where there's so much fanfare. А, учитывая то, что ты делаешь очень, очень такие, знаешь, э, простых начал, э, и на что очень скромно, никогда у тебя нет никаких таких больших, больших амбиций, это все. Как ты себя чувствуешь насчет того, что ты находишься на такой э, карте, э, знаешь, в таком строе, с такими, э, на каких-то, э, 
все в таком что есть таких бойцов, как на тебя это влияет. Ну, на меня никак это не влияет. Я как выступал, как выступаю, и я рад, что могу по-прежнему быть стране, стране с лучшими бойцами. Рад, что могу выступать, радовать вам от него. Uh, he's actually, uh, he says that, that uh, he's very happy that he can be on card like this because, you know, he's uh, on the card with very famous and good fighters and uh, he can be one of them. And, uh, you know, he's, he's you know, very uh, humbled and uh, also feels very happy that he's one of those guys, that he's, you know, he's part of that such phenomenal card. Awesome. And if I could just ask one question to Ryan Bader, just having come up short in past key situations just teetering on the precipice of a title shot with guys like Glover and Rumble. With this title shot coming up, do you view winning this title as like a big capstone and would it be validating on some level? Uh, it's kind of just any other fight, really. You know, after my last loss, I kind of had to look within and kind of see what was going on as far as uh, what I needed to do in the future. And, and one was just taking it light, not putting a bunch of pressure on myself, having fun out there, keeping it light through training camp, the week of, in the locker room behind, laughing, you know, we're having fun, going out there, and that's when I fight the best. So last two uh, fights have been stoppages over tough guys, and, uh, um, you know, that is just a shift in my mentality. So this fight is no different. And, yes, I want to go out there and win the, win the belt and all that, but I'm not even looking at it, um, looking at the belt right now. I'm looking, at, looking to go out there and win, win this fight. So there's no added pressure or anything, but, you know, uh, that's one thing that has eluded me throughout my mixed martial arts career, I went right into the UFC, you know, and uh, um, never got a chance to fight for a belt. So here's my opportunity. I'm going to make the best of it. Awesome. That sounds good. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Our next question comes from the line of Mike Vaughn with Rolling Stone. Hey, guys. This is uh, for Fedor and for Matt Mitrione. Um, you guys obviously went through a full training camp for each other last time, only to have the fight canceled on just a few hours' notice. Uh, going through a full training camp again, how is the fight different this time around? Did you learn anything new, uh, you know, going through a full amount of preparation again, or just how are you looking at this fight differently? And we can uh, start with Fedor and then go over to Matt. Um, что-то ты изменил в своей тренировке, какие-то вещи ты подобрал, да, и научился нам каким-то вещам, и как ты себя чувствуешь, и будешь ли ты делать что-то новое? Да, когда мы были, у меня больше прошла подготовка в Голландии, и для этого я готовил, готовился в России, то а, сейчас больше была подготовка в Голландии, с другими тренерами голландскими, с парень, ребята, партнеры, Стали скопировать мета матрицу. Могу сказать, что травмы не так беспокоили, поэтому я смог более уж покрыточку, чем кошку. Okay. Uh, the uh, main difference was that for the first time uh, when the uh, fight was scheduled, uh, Fyodor spent most of his training time uh, training in Russia. When the uh, fight failed uh, because of the uh, Mitrion's problems, uh, he actually ended up training a lot right now in Holland and uh, with a lot of partners that were trying to mimic uh, Mitrion's style. And uh, he said that he felt very strong and uh, whatever the injuries he had, little injuries that he had before, this time he actually felt a little bit better. And uh, he's, he's in top shape and he's ready to perform. The map. Um, I'm kind of the same way. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I was healthy before I spent some time working, uh, probably I'm, I'm, I might be a little bit more prepared for the ground stuff. Uh, you know, as far as on bar defense, rear naked defense, uh, camera defense, uh, really like, like take down the fence. I feel like I was pretty solid there already as far as take down the fence. But, um, you know, like we worked a, a lot of defensive grappling, uh, and it's just, You know, I, you always come up with something new, like a new kind of counter, a new kind of work, a new kind of, uh, you know, a new kind of angle to work on. And um, you kind of have to. I mean, like, unfortunately for Fedor and for myself, um, we had to go through two camps for the same person. That kind of sucks, man. Like, especially without having to pay off and, like, at least having to get the fight and having to go through another one for uh, to run it back for a second fight. So you kind of have to create something in order to keep it interesting and keep it fresh. 
And I, I remember before, it might have been hype or not, I don't know, but I remember hearing before that Fedor, you know, was, was busy with his life and didn't get a chance to get much training and only got a month in. So hopefully now, uh, Fedor is back to being awesome, badass Fedor that he's always been. And, uh, you know, and we can give the, the fans the best show on earth, hopefully. And uh, I know I'm in pretty solid shape. I'm sure he is as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully this will be what, what, what wasn't in February. Right on. And then just one follow up for Fedor, actually. Um, I know Matt's saying he's feeling in very good shape and everything and all the problems are kind of behind him. But uh, in terms of this fight, has Bellator assured you that if something does happen in the lead up to this fight, that there's going to be, you know, a backup plan in place, a contingency, anything like that? Do you, do you know of any plans like that in case a similar situation comes up like it did before the last fight? Если, например, сейчас э, что-то случится, и он, например, например с Митрионом что-то будет, ну, не может никто сказать, у тебя есть какая-то договоренность э, с Белатуром, что кто-то другой может э, встать и выступить против тебя, или у тебя какой-то... Basically, they talk about the... As a backup. Что если у тебя кто-то есть, что они сказали, что если даже не он, то есть другой кто-то будет, кто драться будет против тебя. Ты обсуждал, что будет в таком плане, это нет, чтобы... So this response was very simple. He said, "Don't don't worry about this. Uh, our fight will happen with Nachion. <laughs> don't worry about all the other details. You know, don't about the uh, contingency plan and what else. He goes, our fight with Nachion will happen. It's, it's guaranteed." Okay. Thanks, Jess. Our next question comes on the line of Jack Incarnacio with the Boston Day Herald. Hi, questions for Fedor. Uh, Fedor, why are you still fighting? <laughs> because I'm a fighter. Uh, how important of a factor um, is, is money to you in deciding what fights to take at this point in your career? насколько для тебя важны э, деньги в данный момент, какой, когда ты решаешь, какой бой ты выбираешь в своей карьере сейчас, в своей э, бойцовской карьере. Поэтому для каждого бойца важны деньги, потому что это твоя работа, это средство на их существование, это э, э, обеспечение для семьи, затраты э, какие-то другие э, нужды. Поэтому... Uh, for every fighter, uh, money uh, plays an important role because that's what you do as a fighter. That's your job, and you have to make sure that you're providing for your family. You know, you're paying expenses when you're training and everything else. So whenever you're making certain uh, negotiations for a fight, you always have to take this in consideration. And, of course, you're always looking for the best you know, financial deal that you can make. Fedor, did you know about Madison Square Garden before taking this fight? Did you know how big and important Madison Square Garden is? Ты знал до этого перед этим боем, насколько важно Madison Square Garden, где ты будешь драться в истории боевых искусств, бокса, что это считается мекой всех боевых искусств, особенно бокса. Ты об этом знал когда-нибудь? Да, конечно. Of course, you knew about this before. And uh, last question, Fedor. Um, what went wrong in the first round of the fight with Fabio Maldonado? Еще вопрос. Что произошло? Что случилось в первом раунде с боем? Что неправильно случилось? Какая ошибка произошла в первом бою с Маденом? Когда все случилось правильно? Просто она Маудонадо сделал неправильный бой. Я думаю, что Маудонадо сделал неправильный бой. И это и на тренировках, и в бою, и то есть, вот, два случая на всей нашей моей карьере, когда я не увидел, да, и не почувствовал. Не, не почувствовал, а... не почувствовал, да, физически как-то. Okay. Um, uh, actually, everything was right. It just, it was second time in uh, my entire fighting career that actually I was in a situation where I didn't see and I didn't feel the uh, punch. He goes, it, it only happened twice uh, through my entire career. And he goes, I just didn't see it. I didn't see it coming. So he goes, but 
uh, everything else that was, you know, right and uh, correct, whatever I was doing, but that was the only time I just didn't see where it came from. So, uh, something like this happens. And if it happens only twice in uh, your entire you know, career in your life, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> Final question, is it significant to him to fight in Madison Square Garden, or is it just another fight? not uh, too overwhelmed by that and he, he doesn't want to downplay it. It's uh, basically saying that of course it's it's important that he's fighting in Madison Square Garden but for him it's going to be just and, and he understands all the way you know, of uh, such privilege and he's very uh, happy about it but he says that to him it's just going to be uh, another fight and uh, his entire goal is just to please his fans and uh, to show a very good fight. Thank you. Welcome. Our next question comes from the line of Tayo Keith with the Fight Network. Hey guys, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, my first question is for uh, Matt Mitrione. Uh Because you played football, you know, briefly for the New York Giants, uh, does, is fighting in Madison Square Garden something extra special for you? Something that's you know uh, more important than if the fight were being held somewhere else? You know, not to give you an insanely cliche answer, but. Uh, no, it's it's like Fedor said, man. It's it's an awesome joint. It's great to have a fight there. Um, and I'll have mad fans there. Like I, I play in New York. I have mad family that lives out there, and a lot of friends I'm talking about there. So it'll be a, it'll be a great crowd, a very friendly crowd. Um, but no, no, man, really, like it doesn't really matter where you fight, to be honest, because all you do is you sit for a whole week. You sit in a hotel room, then you go to a, a joint, uh, an arena for four hours and you go fight somebody, then you do a press conference afterwards. So it's really, you can't get caught up in nostalgia. Maybe when I retire in a handful of years, uh, I'll sit back and be like, holy smokes, I just did that. But as of now and in the moment, I'm not too caught up with it. It's not too fancy. Absolutely. Uh, my next question uh, is for uh, Phil Davis. Is is uh, earning revenge for your previous loss to Bader a huge motivating factor going into this fight, or is it just just more about keeping your, your title at this point? Uh, you know, for me, I don't want to downplay the fact that it is a it is a rematch, and there's a certain amount of uh, uh, extra effort and extra focus that goes into a rematch, but. Never losing the title was that was the game plan since not, since day one. You know, get the title and maintain it. So uh, you know, it's, it's it, it all works together. All right, thanks. And my uh, last question, quick, is just for Fedor. Uh, obviously, you fought a ton of big names uh, throughout your career. You've been a lot of you've been around the MMA world a long time. Where do you you know heading into the fight? Where do you rank your your opponent, Matt Matrion, on that list? Я uh, Matt belongs to uh, a top echelon of uh, MMA fighters, and especially the elite group that he used to fight. And he said, I, I think his fight is a very dangerous fighter, and, you know, he has the same opportunity to win because, you know, he is just very skilled and strong and he has a packing very good punch. So he definitely belongs to the top, top tier of those fighters. All right. Thanks a lot. And thanks a lot, guys. Good luck. Our next question comes from the line of Rodney James Edgar with MMA Latest News. Thank you. First question is for Matt Mitrione. Uh, about a year ago or so, I was speaking with Joey Beltran, and I asked him 
who is the hardest hitter that he's ever faced? And he's been in there with a lot of them. He's been in there with Steve Miocic, Rampage Jackson. He told me Matt Mitrione was by far the hardest he's ever been hit. And I wanted to know, uh, are you aware of your distinction? And if so, how does it make you feel? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been told by quite a few guys I've fought before that that uh, that what I throw lands differently than most people. Um, whatever that reason is, I'm, I'm really happy that's the case. Um, but uh, you know what, man? Like, dude, I, I'm so incredibly fortunate and lucky that I did an opportunity to test myself against a guy like Fedor, who's fought hands down the best in the world when they were at their best. Uh, and he's he's absorbed the punches from everybody. He's and the dude gives shots like he doesn't tell up his punches. He jumps in everything. Um, so this would be an incredible opportunity. Uh, of quickness on quickness, explosiveness on explosiveness, and uh, and power on power, and I can't wait for the opportunity. And uh, and really, the, the the winners here really are the fans. The the, the at, at home on pay per view that's going to give us a little bit of extra money, and and everybody around the world that's going to be watching. It's going to be an awesome experience. Great, and that fight that I spoke of, Bell Town, was only your third fight, you know, in, in special MMA. And since then, you've gone on to knock out several people. Uh, so that's pretty impressive uh, for you. <laughs> Uh, against Fedor, what is the what is your preferred method of victory? In a perfect scenario, how do you win this fight? Well, uh, I think I think I've got eleven victories and, and ten of my knockout. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm I train everything in the world just like everybody else does. I, I, I train as much Greco and and, and 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 wall wrestling and free wrestling and and everything under the sun. I, so I, I do everything I possibly can. But if I'm going to win and I want it the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to throw hands and, and win. Uh, with what's taken me to the dance so far. All right, thank you, Matt. Best of luck, sir. Next and uh, final you. question is for the last emperor, Fedor, uh, Fedor Emelianenko. Uh, earlier, another gentleman asked you why you uh, continue to fight, and uh, the caveat to that, uh, to those who may or may not know, uh, to the casual fan, that is, you know, back in 2011, you retired from the sport. Within the year, you came back to the sport and you, you fought two more times before 2011 ended. Um, where do you go from here, win or lose? I mean, how many more fights do you see in your future? One, three, five, ten? Every other fighter, uh, I would like to fight as long as I can, and my uh, physically I'm capable of, and my body allows me to do it. Uh, um, uh, but again, it's uh, God willing, and then we'll see. So, you know, it's, uh, it provides me the strength and uh, courage. Uh, uh, the uh, I have three fights signed with Bellator, so hopefully, no injuries or anything else. Uh, I will continue to fight. Next question comes from the line of Steve Juan with MMA Mania. Thank you, operator. Uh, first question on this go-around is, is for Michael Chandler. We heard Brent Premis say already that there's a lot more film out there on your fights than there is on his. So do you think that that gives him anything to work with going into the title fight? Uh, you know, absolutely not. I think, uh, I think I have been battle-tested. I mean, uh, Brent and I are around the same age. He's 12 days older than I am. And I have two and a half times the fight that, that he does. Um, we both pretty much made our pro debuts right around the same time. I fought for world title after world title and beat some of the best names in the lightweight division history. Um, his last two wins were split decisions. Uh, I mean, I, I've, I've gone out and impressed over the last couple of years and I'm at an all time high, an all time high confidence. And I'm just ready to go out there and prove that, you know, I've had a phenomenal training camp. Um, you can't deny the fact that I look better and better and better every single time that I step into the cage. So, you know, I'm just a dominant man who's excited to go out there and, and prove that. And uh, Brent Primus has never faced somebody like me. Um, and you can you can study all the tape that you want. You can you can look at movement. You can look at you can look at tendencies. You can look at habits. But 
whenever that cage door closes, it's all out the window, and I'm prepared, and I'm ready to go out there and uh, put a stamp on on uh, Bellator NYC and steal the show. All right, very good, Michael. And my next question is for Ryan Bader. We've already heard Bill Davis say that the plan all along for him was to win the title and maintain it, so that's as important to him as getting the rematch. Do you think then that uh, that affects your game plan at all, knowing that he's looking to maintain as, as opposed to figuring out the edge? No, you know, he's, he's looking to go in there and win, just like every other fighter, you know, on this call and out there, you know. And so I'm looking to go in there and take that title from him. You know, not not like I did the last fight. I want to go in there and put a stamp on it, you know, and get that belt wrapped around my waist at Madison Square Garden, you know. And, uh, um, you know, a lifetime of work comes to fruition that night. So uh, I still, still was a great fighter. You know, he has the belt for a reason. You know, he's a competitor. You know, he wants to get that loss back, and he wants to keep his belt. You know, but I want that belt also. And so uh, it doesn't change anything now. All right. And finally, for Mr. Davis, you've had so many great fights in your career up till now, including the previous fight with Bader that we're looking to see the rematch of on June 24. Where do you rank this one in your fights all time? I've already committed to this fight to being uh, one of my best performances of all time. I've had a great training camp and, uh, my 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 skills are just uh, just I just feel great. My all around game is just great right now, which is why we agreed to take this fight on such short notice. Uh, I wasn't originally the uh, I wasn't originally supposed to be on this card, and uh, I got on it in short notice for a title fight, and uh, we were completely fine with it because uh, my game's just at another level right now. So uh, I, I'm I'm committed. To, this is going to be one of the best performances of my of my career. I look back on this night and say, man, not only was Madison Square Garden great, but, man, I'm, you know, we, we, I really threw down that night. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Our next question comes from the line of Micah Franco with CageMinds.com. Hi, everybody. First question for Phil. Does it make this fight extra special that it's your first title defense? You know, I actually haven't given that much much thought. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I think um, in my mind, I was always a champion even before I was. So now that I actually have the title and I'm defending it, it to me feels like just any other fight because I always felt like I was the best in the world. It was just waiting for the time to prove it. And now that I have the belt that says, Phil, you're the best in the world. Well, uh, you know, I still have everything to prove that I've always had. I'm going to go out there and, and, and put on a, a great show. Do you find motivation and wanting to get the win back from Ryan, or is it more about defending that crown that you have right now? Do I find motivation in doing what now? In trying to get the win back and trying to avenge the loss. You, you don't. I mean, uh, there's uh, n- not really. I mean, it's, I-, I think less about trying to avenge my loss as I do about I'm going to go out there and put on such a great performance that it will it will undo the bad performance that I had in the past. Not so in the last of, month. No, not so much of a vindictive. Uh, you know, I have to get them back for getting me, sort of thing. In the last month since having the title, has that kind of pushed you to another level that you didn't expect with your training? Absolutely. Absolutely pushes me to another level. Uh, uh, I think about every time I get in the gym, um, what motivates me is setting the bar even higher than it was the last time. I I really wanted to beat uh, Liam McGarry. He was a good champion. And, uh, really dig deep in my training to get there. And now I feel like I, uh, I have to raise that bar another nut. Say, hey, here's a guy who, who defeated me before, and we're going to come out and we're going to have an even better performance than we did when we fought Liam McGeary and took the belt from him. So uh, that, that's just where I am. It's all about my personal skill set and how I raise the bar for myself, not necessarily who steps in the cage with me. Thank you, Phil. For Ryan, do you feel any sort of advantage from having won the first meeting? 
Oh, uh, no, not really. You know, I'm such a different fighter than I was that night. You know, that was two years ago, you know, and I've, I feel like I've grown in the last, you know, seven months more than I have in the last five years previously to that. So, you know, for me, it's just uh, uh, going in there. Yeah, you know, I've been in there with, with him before, so you never know really how strong a guy is and really how quick a guy is and whatnot until you get in there. So I've only had one other rematch in my career, and that was with uh, Noguera, you know, in uh, uh, that was my last fight. So this is another rematch. If I can bring anything, it would just be those type of things. But um, I'm looking at this as a whole new fight, you know, um, and I'm a whole new fighter, and I'm sure he is too. So let we'll you go in there, put on a great show, um, you know, and, and take that ball from him, really. I mean, that's it. I'm not looking in the past too much. I'm not looking in the future. I'm looking at next weekend. How did, as Phil mentioned, Taking the fight on short notice, how did that change affect you? A change of opponents and obviously an increase of rounds. Yeah, I mean it wasn't on short notice; it was nine plus weeks, whatnot. Um, but you know, so, uh, I was fighting King Mo, and they're they're so much similar as far as you know they have a really good wrestling pedigree. Uh, you know, and King Mo uses hands a little more than Phil does. Phil uses you know other things more than uh, Mo does. You know, but. Um, you know, we, we, at that point, we were kind of focusing on ourselves anyway. You know, we were focusing on laying that, that, uh, that foundation to go into a, a hard training camp. And so, uh, yeah, we watched a little bit of our King Mo's taste and whatnot, but it was a, it was a, a seamless transition right into to Phil. You know, and one thing that, like I was talking about, that we could take advantage of is I've been in there with him before. You know, and so uh, it, it was pretty easy on, on our side. Do you feel that will play uh, a big part is, is that you have felt him in there before. Do you think he's changed that month much since the first meeting? No, I think we all changed, you know, it, you know, especially, you know, if you, if you look at the last fights and whatnot, you know, Phil went out there, he, he has a belt right now. Obviously he's doing something right, you know, but um, like, like I said, I don't look too much in the past. Yeah. I can take some things away from that fight, um, but I'm not banking on that. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for him to be a completely new fighter, you know? Um, so, you know, we, we're, we worked what we needed to work on for ourselves. We took what we could from the last fight. We took what we could from, you know, his last fights, watching tape and whatnot. And now it's time to just get in there and implement that. You know, uh, uh, MMA is a crazy sport. And you can't say, oh, because he beat him last time, he's going to beat him again. You know, we're both different fighters. We're going in there. And we, you know, he wants to retain his belt. I want to, you know, get my hands on that belt. And that, that's it. Our next question comes from the line of Igor Lazarin with TASS. Hi, colleagues. Uh, I'm glad to hear you. Uh, the first question for Fyodor Emelianenko. Здравствуйте, Fyodor Vladimirovich. Рад вас слышать. My question will be in Russian and uh, in English. Fyodor Vladimirovich, хотели бы вы досрочно завершить поединок с Мэттом Дмитриевым? И есть ли это в плане на бой? Uh, so do, do you want to finish this fight before the end? Ну, конечно, как и любой другой бой, я стараюсь, постарно, всегда стараюсь завершить его досрочно, э, победить красиво, но как бы не все зависит от меня, поэтому посмотрим, как будет в бою, что um, of course, I would like to finish fight as quick as I can, as fast as I can. But it all depends on uh, what Matt Mitrion will show in fight. You know what he will uh, demonstrate against me. And uh, as I said, yes, of course, uh, I'll do whatever is possible. You know, whatever is in my uh, ability to finish fight as fast as I can. Okay. Uh, and the second question for Fyodor. Uh, Fyodor Vladimirovich, как проходит процесс акклиматизации? Uh, все ли в порядке, и как вы себя чувствуете в Америке? Uh, how is the acclimatization uh, process going? Спасибо большое. Ну, чувствую себя хорошо. Ну, uh, мы вчера прилетели вечером, и вчера она говорит о какой-то да, каком то процессе. Еще до суток не прошло. Ну, чувствую себя хорошо. Спасибо. Uh, I feel okay. I mean, we just uh, came to the United States yesterday, so uh, I cannot tell you. I mean, I feel okay, but uh, uh, 
but I cannot really tell you that I already got acclimated or not. But I'm okay. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm trying to change the sleeping hours, uh, but I'm doing fine. Okay, and the next question for Matt Mitrion. Hi, Matt. How do you feel? How about your healthy? Sorry, I had to take you off a minute there. Um, I feel great, man. I feel fantastic. Uh, as far as I know, I have no kidney stones. Uh, there should not be any uh, problem uh, as far as finally getting this fight on the way. And uh, by the way, I really appreciate Fedor's response to a question I asked earlier about, you know, has Bellator approached you about uh, another setup just in case this happens again? And his response was, uh, no, this fight's going to happen, but we're going to make it work. Um, you know, it just shows like why, why he's the greatest of all time. You know, he's humble. He's got incredible answers to to questions, and he's uh, about as genuine as they get in this game. So, thanks a lot. I really appreciate the confidence in that. I'm glad we can finally get this thing going. Thank you, guys. Спасибо и удачи, Федор Владимирович. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next question comes in the line of Tony Fagnano with MMAToday.com. Hi, for uh, Ray, Ryan Bader first. Um, there was a report that you said you, you were making three to four times more in sponsorship money since you moved to Bellator. Uh, is that figure accurate? And just what does that mean to you personally to have, you know, your sponsors back? Yeah, no, that's huge. You know, um, and I, I was one of the uh, guys that had a lot of fights in your seat. You know, I was on my 20th fight in your seat, so I was a, a high-tiered um, Reebok pay out for what they were paying, you know, and, and, and before Reebok came in, you know, we were doing a good job of sponsors, you know, that's a testament to my manager, you know, Dave Martin and, and, uh, relationships that we have with, with great sponsors, you know, and they've always stuck around when Reebok came by, but just at a smaller level. And so, uh, to be able to represent them to the fullest, <laughs> come over to the tour, be able to, you know, have our own sponsors. Um, you know, that's, that's a significant source of income, you know, and so we uh, we picked up right where we left off, really, from the glory days of UFC sponsorship right into Bellator sponsorship. So, um, you know, it got to the point where a lot of fighters were saying sponsorship was dried up and all this kind of stuff. But, you know, um, that's more of, a, a, I think, being, you know, ma managers being lazy, you know, and poaching off of other people's shorts, you know. So we've had these you know, key relationships. So when it's time to plug in, you know, we were, uh, we were sold out, you know, on, on space two months ago for this fight. Okay, our next question comes from the line of Bob Carson with Sports, Sports Insider Online. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Uh, my first question is for Federer Emelianenko. Federer, uh, can you give us an idea of your travel schedule? Um, are you here in the United States? And uh, if not, when will you be arriving? And once you're in the United States, I know in the past you've trained at uh, Steve Kipper's combo, uh, Combat Samba Gym. Do you plan to do so uh, in, uh, during this time during the I'm already in the United States. Uh, uh, as I said, I came yesterday. Uh, um, no, I'm not going to train at Steve's place at Tampa Town because we found another place where I'm going to train. It's probably going to do it also in hotel. Um, and uh, uh, my plans just to relax, get acclimated, and most importantly, I would like to buy some kids' clothes for my youngest daughter and uh, for probably some uh, toy that she's going to love. So that's, that's my plans right now before the fight. Our next question comes from the line of Edward Carvajal with Front Proof Media. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my call. Um, my question is for the champ, Michael Chandler. Um, uh, everyone just referenced the uh, 
all the battles he's had in uh, in Bellator, and he probably fought for it and defended the title um, so much so much more than than uh, uh, the other title holders. Is it, does the do you get any pressure like you might have a bullseye on your back? I know that's that comes with being a champ, but it seems like it seems like the guys are out to get you a little more than than in the uh, champs of the other division. Do you ever get that feeling, especially with uh, as as often as you've been fighting? No, absolutely not. I think uh, I think I've had a a big time maturation uh, process throughout the last couple of years, man. I mean, nobody nobody. Um, not many people have gone through what I've gone through in the sport when, as far as bursting onto the steam, um, dethroning, uh, the lightweight champion Eddie Alvarez coming in and getting ranked up there in the top three, top five in the world, and then losing, losing the title, losing three fights in a row now coming back and proving my worth back in this lightweight division. It's been a roller coaster of emotions. There's been so many ups, so many downs. I used to put so much pressure on myself to be perfect and I could, I could care less anymore, man. I I train hard. I do every single thing right. I live this sport. I breathe this sport every single day, and there's not a man alive that works harder than me. And when you have that kind of confidence, you just throw everything else out the window. There's no more pressure. I could care less what people say about me. I could care less what people think about me. All that matters to me is winning fights and providing for my wife and my future children. Everyone else can kick rocks, and that's really where I'm at uh, with everything. And I'm having a blast doing it. I love my job. I love what I do. I'm the best that I've ever been. Um, so it, it's great, man. I got I got the featherweight champion calling me out, hating me. I got you know welterweights talking about me. I got you know. So it's it's just good. It's good for the sport. There's there's a lot more buzz going on over here in Bellator uh, than there has been in the past. And when you're a guy who has helped build this organization and can can truly say that this organization has helped build me, um, you know, it, it's been a good symbiotic. Uh, win-win situation. I've been involved in the most exciting, explosive, dynamic fights that Bellator has ever had and probably ever will have. And I'm going to continue that reign and continue that trend on June 24th and on into the future. And then we'll see what the future holds. But, you know, where I'm at right now, I'm just, I'm excited to compete. I am firing on all cylinders. I'm the best that I've ever been. And and it's, uh, I could care less what people think, what people say. I'm excited to step across the line and bite down on my mouthpiece against Burt Primus. And that's, that's what is, uh, that is what is happening. And it's, uh, it's going to be something to behold at Madison Square Garden June 24th. And that's, that's my sole focus. And then we'll focus on what, what, uh, what happens next. I know there's, there's numerous big fights out there, not necessarily at the lightweight division, but other big fights, uh, welterweight division. I, got, I, have a, I am putting a bullseye on all those guys' back. And they're uh, they're on notice, and I'm I'm ready to step up and and uh, gain a few pounds and eat a eat an extra pizza and go up there and and win the welterweight belt as well. So that's where I'm at. I could care less what people think, what people say. Um, I'm just excited to go out there and perform. And our last question comes from the line of Eddie Goldman with No Holds Barred. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I have a question for Fedor. Uh, when uh, Matt Mitrione spoke, he talked of his submission and takedown defense and how he wants to keep the fight standing. In the early part of your career, you won many fights by submission, but in recent years, your victories have just been through knockout or decisions. Fader, has your style changed over the years, and what can we expect in terms of Mixing the mixing of striking and grappling against Matt Mitrione. Я бы не сказал, что я изменил стиль, я начал работать как раз 
не просто, наверное, я владел данной техникой достаточно хорошо, чтобы биться с бойцами ударного семейства. Ну, я так, я по-прежнему делал блюд прием, удушающий прием и вот обеждание. Um, everything, of course, depends uh, on the way the fight will go. Uh, what both of us, me and Achuyon, will offer each other in terms of, uh, you know, fighting. Uh, the only reason why you saw more striking is because I actually trained more in striking. I became more confident and I knew that I can stand up to the guys that are purely strikers. But uh, to say that I changed my style, that's not necessarily true. I, I feel, feel very strongly about taking people down and uh, submitting them or uh, choking them out. So, again, uh, it all depends how this fight will go, of course, it will take. And, uh, If uh, if I see uh, any opportunity where uh, will be striking or submission, uh, I'll take care of it. Thank you. Great. I just wanted to uh, thank all of our fighters and all the media for joining us on today's call. We look forward to a great Bellator NYC Fight Week uh, with the event taking place at Madison Square Garden next Saturday. Thank you again, and have a great day.